All right, in this video, let's transfer all the footman's animations to the peasant. Somebody said they want to do that. Um, one of the things you got to know if we're going to do that is that when we're interacting with a lot of this stuff in the model, um, everything that says LOD on it is actually just a typo from Blizzard, and it's not supposed to be there. So we're just going to delete all that. It's going to make our lives easier while we're working. So let me just toggle all this stuff on. That's great. Um, and then toggle off everything that doesn't have LOD on the end of it, okay? And then just basically just select all that and delete it. It's all just a waste of space. Uh, basically every model in Reforged just has like four copies of itself. And you can see somewhere on the Hive I made a thread about that. I was asking, does anybody know why every Reforged model has like four copies of itself? Nobody ever gave me a clear answer. So I'm just assuming that it's all a uh, big waste. And assuming that it is, uh, what you want to do is just basically delete all of those extra copies. This will make your life a lot easier because now you have the footman which only has nine parts and you have the peasant which only has ten parts and within those parts the skeleton is the, our, the skeleton of the peasant consists of the last two parts and the skeleton of the footman consists of his last two parts and this is going to help us line them up uh, when we're doing an animation transfer. So let's go back to the peasant here and basically do um, import from workspace and it needs to be a workspace now because we're using a modified footman so we're importing from that footman in the workspace and we're just going to import all his animations over so this should be good um, it's loading these things always take a little bit longer to load on, on reforged things than what I was used to when I made them with SD stuff but yeah here we go alright so here's our pop-up uh, all this thing with this just click leave uh, so then you get to animations. Um, animations, we're thinking we want to just take all of them, just every single every single one of these animations. It's cool. So we're definitely going to use motion from all as much as possible here on uh, all these bones. But uh, obviously there's going to be some stuff that might go wrong with that. Uh, with these animations, we probably do want the sounds and footprints. You know, I think some people have joked about this before, but obviously footprints are really important. I would say don't import the attachment points because the attachment points generally um, probably are important to stay uh, as they were on the peasant model so that they're in the right places and it is relative to the model shape. So we're just going to take these event objects which is like sounds and footprints and then we don't want collision shapes or portrait. Uh, again those are kind of relative to the, the shape of the model that we're not moving. Uh, between models. Cool. So then we have this visibility tab which as you can see in some configurations um, is a little bit frustrating that the maximum scroll width here should be wider but uh, what we're really interested in is these geo sets and the spawn thing. Make sure this spawn thing is not vis like anything you're importing from the footman should not show up in the peasant animations but the peasants actual, um, oh and I guess you could do the same with the peasants like the, whatever this is uh, make that not show up in footman animations just for good measure. Cool. So we have the peasants geo sets here right and uh, the, the main thing is you want the last two to correspond to the last two of the footmen. So Geo said nine on the peasant, and I really need to upgrade this to show the names. Nine on the peasant here, this bottom one, is his like part one of his skeleton. And ten is is gonna correspond to nine on the footman, which is the last part of that skeleton. So now we kinda have those corresponding stuff set up. Uh, the other problem that we're gonna have is gold and the lumber and all that business. And we probably don't want that showing up uh, for the peasant. So Basically, if you think of these by number, right, one, two, three here are not our guy, and then four, five, and six are these, uh, four, five, and six are basically like the carryables. So what I can do is just shift select all of them and just say for all of these um, carryable things, they're going to be not visible. So our goal there is just that we're going to have the peasant with no skeleton, um, and that's going to show up in all of the footman animations. So when I click finish on this, I would anticipate that it's probably going to work, but we're going to have a problem with the hand that we had in my last video. So let's check that out. Um, now if I go down to the bottom, you can see Cinematic Walk 1 is the last peasant animation. Um, then beneath that, we have Stand 1 from the Footman. And so for basically all of these Footman animations, you sort of see the same thing going on, that they're pretty much all working, but his hand is messed up because his hand is encoded in a different way in the peasant than it is in the Footman. So you sort of have a couple of choices here, right? If your goal is to have him only doing footman animations, you could remove all the peasant animations and fix his hand really easily by uh, basically linking the skeleton in the same way as the footman skeleton. Um, if that option is not available to you, things get a lot harder because you have to come up with what do you want to do with the peasant's hand um, that would allow you to have both animations at the same time which is a potential thing somebody might want, right, is maybe, maybe you want all of the peasant animations as like stand and you want all the footman animations as like stand alternate. And so that's going to be really inconvenient 
if all the footman animations have his hand messed up. And m in this case, we've transferred so many animations that like trying to fix his hand manually it would be a huge waste of time. You would not want to do that. Um, so this really creates the question, uh, what are you going to do about it, right? What is the solution? And I'd say it's kind of relative to your case because what I don't have and I haven't coded yet is something that would actually like sort of fox attach the hand to where it would have been in every animation. Um, it's just not really feasible and it's not really built that way. Um, but again, uh, you could, you know, so right now all of the peasant animations are fine, all the footman animations are busted. For the sake of example, uh, let's do again what we did in the last video, just so we can see all those nice footman animations working on the peasant. Um, Sorry, all this stuff down here should get toggled off. We're only interested in the hand right now. Cool. So this is his hand thing. Uh, we're just going to right-click that and set parent to basically R, uh, lower arm, twist, bind, joint. Uh, we link that, and then what you can see is now his hand is sort of where the footman's hand would be. And so this would be great if you're making like a, uh, maybe your own custom militia concept model uh, based on the original peasant or something, right? Because, um, you know, now he has like stand, defend, like the footman, and you could basically almost stick a shield on there. Um, but obviously as soon as you do that, as soon as you make this compromise that I just did, all the original peasant animations are kind of all messed up. So then maybe for those, uh, you could try to basically eliminate some of that. Um, and I guess the way to do that would be if you said, let's import from uh, we basically want to import from nothing. So like, what if we import from the farm? It doesn't move, right? We're just kind of importing nothing here for a second. Uh, bear with me, I'm going to explain what I'm doing once the pop-up shows up. We're going to try to get this as good looking as we can. Obviously there are going to be some uh, setbacks, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. So I'm, I'm clicking leave all. The, the Geoset tab, animation tab, bone tab, and object tab. If you click leave all on every single one of them, then we're in a state where we're basically importing nothing. If I click finish, nothing happens. But we do want to import something. We're going to import the stand of the farm, which notably is an animation where absolutely nothing happens. And so that's my goal, is basically just importing nothing to essentially overwrite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to all of the peasant animations in this model, which is all this group, and I'm going to shift select all of them, and I'm going to say time scale into pre-existing. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically doing an animation transfer of the sort that normally is like blending, right? It's the same kind of idea you would use if you were going to merge um, like a mount onto a horse and you need them to animate at the same time, like the mount to animate along with the horse, right? This idea of sort of animation blending. It's just that what I'm doing is basically blending nothing. I'm just kind of saying take the stand animation of the farm, which is doing absolutely nothing, and use that to overwrite all the data on um, all this peasant information. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take the farm root bind joint, which I'm almost sure doesn't move at all, and we want to stick that basically on the peasant's right hand where this problem is. Um, so this is going to be, we have like all this arm twist, whatever, and then we have bone hand right. And I'm pretty sure bone hand right was that root thing. Let's make sure of that um, in terms of where we put that spine, chest. Uh, yeah, so this thing's useful too if you want to just kind of view the layout structure. But yeah, bone hand right was that thing that we repositioned. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to that same bone hand right, and basically we're importing this farm animation on it, which is to say, do nothing. And so I'm going to say eliminate what it was doing and make it do absolutely nothing. Visibility, I think, doesn't even matter because it should just stay how it was. Um, so I just click finish. And what this is going to try to do is make it that in the peasant's original animations, his right hand isn't broken anymore because it doesn't do anything. And so in that sense, like, you can tell it's a lot closer to how you'd think it should be. There are just going to be some instances where it doesn't perfectly align with, like if you watch right here, where it doesn't perfectly align with the wood, because his hand would have previously been moving slightly, where now it isn't. But we've sort of linked it similar to how the footman was designed, that now his left hand is linked onto his left arm. And so you don't really have this problem where it'll just float away and be all nonsense. So now most of those original um, peasant animations are like acceptable quality. You might notice if you play them in slow-mo and like freeze frame in the middle of some of these animations that where his hand was previously around the wood, now it's it's not quite, it's it's uh, slightly different linking. But really, for the most part, for most of these animations, um, we're, we're sort of in, a, in an acceptable close enough stage that I would say if you're like zoomed out from like an RTS camera, these are probably gonna look fine. 
And now that we've done this, and now that we have this, this different peasant structure in the original peasant animations, the imported footman animations are all also going to look fine and animate in the way and the style of the footman. So this is a way that you can fix sometimes when you have that kind of animation bug after a transfer, but it's definitely dependent on the footman, right? Um, there are cases where if you do the same thing, uh, things might be annoying and not look as good, whereas in this case, uh, it really seems like almost everything this guy does is looking just about fine. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much an example of, uh, of how to get a peasant that has all of the animations of the peasant and the footman. And obviously if you use this in game it's not going to look very good because he's going to be jumping between the animations, right? He has like stand one peasant and he has stand one footman and it's weird to have both. But the, the next step I think that you would want to do here would be to go to the sequences and like go to the second half, go to all the footman ones and make it like, you know, just put alternate in here or something, right? So you have a stand alternate on all the footman animations. So um, yeah, basically you could do that uh, and then pretty soon you'd have a workable model you could use uh, pretty easily there. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much, that's pretty much how you do that. So good luck. Happy modeling.